Welcome to the Political Trenches, local government at work. Our guest today is Summerside PEI Mayor Dan Kutcher. Mayor Kutcher was elected mayor of the city of Summerside in 2022. He's a father, a husband, lawyer, entrepreneur, volunteer, and former political advisor in my home province of Ontario. Mayor Kutcher is an active Rotarian with the Summerside Rotary Club and former board member with Easter Seals PEI and the Free Stone. He has also served as president of the Harbourfront Theatre Board of Directors Directors, president of the Greater Summerside Chamber of Commerce, and the director with Downtown Summerside Incorporated and the Summerside Regional Development Corporation. Now, if that's not all, he also serves as the Federation of Prince Edward Island Municipalities as city's town director for the Prince area of the province. With that, Mayor, welcome to the show. Great, thanks. Thanks for having me. So, Mayor, I want to start off quickly with a simple question, but it's a general question and the overarching theme of Prince Edward Island municipalities. In your opinion, what is the state of municipalities across the province of Prince Edward Island today? Well, I think it's probably similar to others across the rest of the country. Look, some of the big challenges that are facing us are not unique to Summerside. They're not unique to Prince Edward Island or to the Maritimes in Atlanta, Canada or across Canada. So, um, whether those are housing, revitalizing downtowns, dealing with um, uh, increasing issues surrounding homelessness. Um, you know, I, so we're, we're all kind of in the same boat. Um, we're all struggling uh, as a certain level of government in that sort of hierarchy. And uh, But overall, I think the state of municipalities, at least from a state of the city, sort of how, how people are doing, um, I'm I'm happy where things are at, but I'm always never complacent in terms of we've got a lot more to do. We got a lot of things we can do better. I'll jump in now if I can. And you made a couple, or you made reference to a couple of uh, topics that we were going to bring up, and one one is really around sustainability, municipal sustainability. Can you speak to it from uh, the perspective of what Summerside is doing that you think is either unique or perhaps not particularly common around the rest of the country? Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, one of the things that uh, we're fortunate to have here in Somerset is we, we own our own electric utility. And that used to be much more common across the country and, and uh, you know, consolidation and uh, changes in distribution and production of electricity changed over the decades. But Somerset held on. And about uh, 10 to 15 years ago, we made a transition to actually producing electricity and we started with four windmills and that would be my prede uh, predecessor mayor stewart um had some great vision there and um started us down a journey towards sustainability and two pieces to it i think there's probably a component that was yes look this is the right thing to do we need to do our part in terms of mitigating the effects of climate change um, but as well as a as a utility owner as an owner of utility uh, provide us an opportunity uh, to reduce the amount of power we had to purchase from off island and be able to produce our own which created economic benefits for a city today this past year we opened the biggest um, solar farm in atlantic canada here in summerside for size and scope for you sort of 80 acres so that'd be forty six thousand panels then attached to it is a 10 megawatt uh 21 megawatt hour battery system so that could power the city for up to five hours so right now I can look out the window, it is sunny, and I can see the flags blowing in front of City Hall, it is windy. Um, when that happens, we often are producing 100% of the electricity that is being used here in Summerside within the borders of Summerside, and it's clean and renewable. I understand that you're interested in how the shift towards green energy can power economic development locally and regionally as well. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think when you know we're in a global transition in a whole bunch of different uh, facets, and one of them is the energy transition that has right. uh, been happening now for a few years and will continue to accelerate. Um, so we're really well positioned here in Summerside to be able to use um, some of our assets that we have, both whether it's wind farm, solar, uh, we're developing our uh, Atlanta Canada's first uh, net zero industrial facility here in the city. We work with a organization, a company here in Summerside called Blue Wave AI that does load management and growth management. Uh, growth you know, manages our load uh, from an electrical perspective. And um, we have a heat for less program where we store energy uh, in people's homes through a variety of means, um, hot water heaters, uh, block furnaces. Um, and so that creates an ecosystem for uh, 
sort of green technology, but also green jobs. So those are good jobs. They're good paying jobs. Um, though it doesn't take a lot of people to run a solar farm. Um, but we have developed really uh, a living lab here in Summerside where we have sort of the, the size and space to be able to um, be nimble and innovative and then uh, attract companies to come do interesting things here, which we've done. I want to turn back to a topic that you were talking about in your original uh, statement, and that is uh, some of the issues that are not unique to just Summerside. In a CBC interview just last month, you said that Summerside will take managing the pressures of growth over the alternative, with the alternative being the decline in population. This is regarding the changes to the new provincial immigration plan that was set out by the King government in Prince Edward Island. Are municipalities like Summerside, or in this matter, municipalities across the P Prince Edward Island, prepared for the continuous influx of population growth today? Because when I speak to municipal leaders, it seems to be a concern in smaller rural communities, not larger cities like Summerside. Yeah, you know, whether we're prepared, you know, I don't think necessarily even as a city or as uh, elsewhere, we're, we're really appreciated what the impacts of the, the demographics is doing today and is going to do in the years ahead. So in Atlanta, Canada, we've got uh, two people leaving the workforce for every one coming in, and we're not different than that. Our median age here in Summerside um, is around 47 and a half years old, or 20 years ago, it was 34. And if we don't uh, retain and attract young workers and have um, them form households at a younger age, really, you know, household formation is getting to, um, we need to you know, lower the age of that household formation. We're simply not going to have, whether it's the PCWs or the carpenters or the grocery clerks um, or the physicians or whoever in our community to take care of our older adults. So what we've done here in Summerside is tried to uh, adjust our focus and put a lens around uh, making sure that we are building and growing our community in a smart, sustainable way, but with a focus on the, those young working families um, so that we can keep those that we have so that young people here can have a place to live and an affordable place to live to get their family started um, in order to take care of our older adults. So I think uh, I always think the demographic challenge is the one that isn't changing that much. Um, the pressures of immigration, and we have two streams of immigration too, right? We have our international immigration. Um, and we also, we, we're here in the Maritimes, we've gone through this um, maritime you know, population boom that has also been driven by interprovincial migration. And those uh, two cohorts bring different challenges and different pressures and different opportunities. But um, so for me, back to your original uh, statement about managing I would far rather manage the pressures of growth than those of decline. Uh, like I said, I'll take that every single day of the week. I think being able to figure out ways to respond to growth and to make sure that it works and benefits our communities uh, and our local economy and our residents um, is something we can do and something that I really enjoy trying to do. The alternative, you know, the, the years of declining population with an aging population presents really, really big challenges that um, I don't think we would prepare for that either, to be honest. But on the flip side of that, and I'm going to play a little bit of a political devil's advocate mm. with you here, Mayor, for a second, the retention and attraction of residents, the uh, immigration policies, the interprovincial immigration is not just a municipal issue. While you can go it alone and try to make these issues a municipal issue, the province and the federal government need to come to the table. Do you get a sense that all three levels of government in Summerside and your MLA or your MP are working together to address these issues, not just at a municipal level, but at a provincial and federal level? Yeah, I think so to a degree. Um, I always think of sometimes, uh, I was thinking of municipal politics or, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just closing something here, um, is, you know, in a lot of ways, I think of it as a uh, lunch at daycare, which is where you kind of get what you get and you don't get upset. <laughs> we can't control what the the, pol the immigration policies are going to be from the federal government or what those, uh, you know, where the provincial government has uh, avenues and opportunities to do that as well. We kind of have to focus on how we're going to build our community to work with in whatever those immigration policies may or may not be. Um, and I always appreciate you know, they have, you know, other levels of government have different perspectives and different pressures as well. So we often say, you know, healthcare isn't our responsibility, and it's not. We want to contain, you know, continue to try and do a you know, have an active community to retain and attract nurses and physicians. Um, 
but at the same time, that isn't something that we need to focus on, but we need to try and to make work here in our community. So it's, you know, it is a, we work relatively well um, sometimes. Uh, we certainly share our opinions with each other, which I think is is the most important part and maintain an open dialogue. So um, again, having spent time in at the other levels of government years ago, I can appreciate and understand their perspective as much as I can appreciate and understand their perspective of mine. Yeah, we're in a fundamental human business as uh, as government, and uh, as such, relationships are really important. Uh, the week this episode is uh, put to air, you will Summerside will be hosting the Atlantic Mayor's Caucus or AMC. What do you see as big topics around Atlantic Canada that you and your colleagues are going to be uh, having a conversation about? Yeah, two big pieces uh, for the Atlantic Mayor's Congress uh, coming up next week here in Summerside. One, housing. Housing will cover more than half of the agenda. All the different components of housing as well, right? When you say housing to one person, uh, it means something different than when you say housing to somebody else. So you can talk about housing and you can talk about someone might jump to immediately to uh, unhoused populations and homelessness, whereas someone else might jump to making sure we have a diverse, uh, attainable supply of housing for different individuals in different stages of their life. So that's a main focus. We've got, I think now, all of the um, Atlantic housing ministers coming for one of the panels. Minister Sean Fraser, the federal minister of housing, is here. Um, we've got Lisa Raid and Mike Moffat, one of the housing policy gurus here. So we're doing our best to get all the right people in the room. And, it, and it's coincided with um, where we are here at the city of Summerside it's next week, literally the day before this uh, the AMC starts. We have our first council meeting where we introduce um, significant changes to our official plan, all geared around housing and the new zoning bylaw. So we're into the middle of our public consultation phase. And we were one of the first municipalities in, across Canada, I think we were 19th, um, to receive the Housing Accelerator Fund um, approval and funding. And so we're at that same stage where, you know, Calgary, Toronto, Halifax have been going through these difficult sometimes discussions at the community level, and um, we're right there with them. I understand, too, that you have established a mayor's task force on housing locally, too, and what if you wanted to blow that horn just a little bit, talk a little bit about what it's about. Yeah, so it's you know, no surprise. I ran an election campaign on housing first um, on all the, the pieces that we talk about on a regular basis. That's what uh, our community uh, got behind. Um, one of the first things I did is form a mayor's task force on attainable housing to get experts um, across all uh, across the spectrum um, together here in Summerside and not just from Summerside, some from outside of uh, our you know, city borders and boundaries. Um, to make sure we had expert input on what we needed to do as a community uh, to improve uh, the supply of attainable housing. Um, we already had a, 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 a needs assessment prepared. We know what we need to do here in Summerside. We need to build about 200 to 220 units a year for a decade. Um, the task force was formed. It was given a very uh, specific mandate and a tight timeline, and they did an excellent job and reported back. Council adopted those recommendations and started to put those in place. Those then rolled right into our housing accelerator fund application, um, which expanded upon that. And now all of that, that is the work that's coming forward today. So we don't really have a whole, you know, we wanted to make sure we started to get on top of this and do it as quickly as possible, but also in a way that's informed by data and experience and expertise from people across the spectrum, right? So folks who are working with vulnerable populations, um, policy experts, uh, developers, um, lenders, um, all of the people who are involved in the increase in the supply of housing, which is our ultimate goal. And here in Summerside last year, we led uh, PEI and Housing Starts. We had over 500 starts here, which is great, catching up to some of that structural deficit. Um, we smashed our uh, building permit records um, Incredibly, last year here in Summerside, we were $109 million, which is a lot, a lot for us. We've never been close to $100 million before, um, and uh, the city is booming, and we're responding, and the momentum is good. So um, I feel like we're in a good place, although the reality is for still too many uh, people in our community, the housing is um, out of, you know, the type of housing that they want, and the, the housing in general is uh, is still out of reach in terms of it's still taking up far too much of people's take home income. 
Okay, there's about three questions I want to ask, and I don't know yeah. how to ask them all in I'll one. I'll try and keep my answer shorter. <laughs> no, no, I, because they're all in the same realm. So you, you first talked about public consultation. And I've got to know, because I, I, ask this show, I ask this question on my other show all the time, but from your perspective, do you get a sense that people are engaged on the issues that are in going on in Summerside? When you ask people for their opinion or how you think the official plan should be developed or how a public hearing should go, do you get a sense that people are actually engaged at the municipal level in Summerside and they want to give your feedback to you about what should be going on in the community? Or is it the age old adage, as long as my garbage is picked up and my water's turned on, I'm happy with what's going on in the community? Yeah, both. And, and public uh, dialogue and consultation, I would say meaningful consultation um, and uh, consultation with intent is really, really important. Um, it is a, increasingly a challenge where we are living in this world of you know, 40 second sound bites um, where information is coming from a variety of different places, some good, some not. For communities like ours that used to have a central point for, you know, we've been our local newspaper, which is where everything would have been put out. Everyone would have known what was happening today. Things can be coming in, you know, in the newspaper but people aren't necessarily reading. It's coming on a website here. It's coming on social media there and people miss things. And then at the end of the day, um, to sort of go back uh, years that you have a good friend to just say look people lead uh, are busy and lead just in time lives and um, if it isn't affecting them sometimes that's not the type of thing they want to get engaged with or have the time to uh, consider and get engaged with um, but I think as a municipal leader it's really incumbent on us to proceed um, always uh, in a way that gives people as many opportunities as possible for feedback because we want feedback <laughs> this is a it is, at least this is my approach. It isn't like I'm not going out asking people for people for feedback and I already have a We already know what we want to do. I genuinely want to know what, what people um, uh, have to have to think. And so their engagement is really, really important. So uh, I think it's also incumbent on us to make sure that when we uh, do go through our public engagement processes, we go beyond the bare minimum and we listen with intent and we actually engage with people and uh, and respond to them. Mm. The, the, the chicken and the egg question has to be asked because you talk about the exponential growth that Summerside has been having over the last year with so many housing starts. But you and I and Ian both know, all three of us know that municipalities do not build houses. They build the infrastructure for the housing to be there. You talk about the sustainable way that Summerside is growing to ensure that housings can start so people can have access. How do you sustainably grow a community like Summerside with the tools that the provincial government and the federal government give you? Because FCI, FCM and the FPEIM, I always get that acronym wrong, mm. have been calling for a trilateral agreement between all three levels of government on a new fiscal framework for municipalities. Do you get a sense that in PEI, because I know you have the lowest return from the province across this country when it comes to yep. property taxes do you get a sense that you're going to be stuck in this perpetual cycle of trying to do this alone no i don't i don't think we're we're doing it alone and i don't uh, i don't feel alone in any way i do feel that there is active engagement at both other levels of government on this file and i think this is one of only a handful of files that I can think of from over the years in my life throughout politics, um, where there is uh, alignment uh, across all levels of government in terms of the priority to get housing built. Also, really, at the end of the day, it's not you know, government builds some houses, but it's the private sector that builds housing. Right? So it is so the relationships that you have with the developers and contractors that are actually building the housing is also a really important piece of it. Um, and you need to be able to continue to create opportunities for them to succeed here. On the infrastructure piece, look, absolutely, it's a big deal here. We are, again, we're fortunate to a degree here in Summerside. Some of our, our core infrastructure, something like you know, wastewater treatment, uh, lift station capacity, um, is a little was overbuilt uh, a number of years ago. So we we don't we have room to be able to continue to infill parts of our city um, and we're fortunate to be able to do that like if we didn't have if we weren't overbuilt to a certain degree um, we'd have some really big issues coming at us 
So what we've been fortunate to be able to do is take some of those investments and put them into direct infrastructure that leads to housing. So one of the biggest initiatives, our biggest capital spend, at least uh, over the last year, this year, and for the next two years is a $20 million investment um, to open up 350 acres of land with a new housing corridor here in Summerside. It connects the central part of our city to the eastern part of our city. It improves access and transportation for individuals, bike paths, sidewalks, roads, um, improves emergency access to a, a, a chunk of our city. But at, the, at its core, um, it opens up a significant amount of infill and development opportunities here in our city and gives us the chance to look at doing it also in uh, more innovative and unique ways, at least uh, compared to what we've done in the past. I'm going to change this from a topic a discussion on topics to a discussion of the role of a mayor as well. And you've been mayor now for what a year and a half or so. Um, yeah, I looked at a, sorry. Yeah, I looked at a picture of myself the other day. <laughs> I, had, I looked younger. <laughs> All right. In eighteen <laughs> I used months. I always think like, oh yeah, that would. Uh, All politicians they always look older, but anyway, maybe we always do. But sorry, to maybe. No, no, that's okay. I'm interested in what made you decide uh, you want you were interested in the role of mayor, and um, as a follow up to that, kind of what you is the job what you thought it was going to be. Yeah, uh, it. What made me interested is like I've always I, I love I, I love cities. I think cities are so fascinating. They're the only natural political governing unit. They they are they are where people even if if we had no other levels of government, we would still have cities. We've always had cities throughout the history of civilization and. Um, I've always found that really, really fascinating. And cities are where you get the birthplace of arts and culture. Without cities, you don't have uh, you don't have organized sport. You don't have any of these things that really are uh, so unique to to humans, to our species. Which I so I you know on my desk back there, I've got the Lapham's Quarterly uh, Cities uh, Edition because I just think it's I've always been fascinated by it. Um, as well, I've always you know. For whatever reason, uh, I think it's incumbent on, on us to give back and to uh, and to recognize the fact that if you know if my kids' friends don't do well, my kids aren't going to do well. And as a community, and I've spent many years involved in the community in a variety of different capacities, whether it's for not for profits or for uh, chambers of commerce and this type of thing. And I've been a business owner here as well. So. Um, when I sold my business uh, a few years ago, I had an opportunity to step back and look at what I wanted to do next. Um, our city is growing and changing. And um, the previous mayor, who was a friend of mine, but uh, had been the mayor for 30 years with an interruption for four, um, I thought there was a need for a change. And uh, so I went about doing it and um, you know, the residents were supportive and uh, and I've just been doing my best ever since. So, it, and does it go to what I expected? I, I didn't have any specific expectations as to what it would be. Um, I had a rough idea, but also recognized that I, I wouldn't really know until I got there. And I'm still figuring, I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> um, <laughs> this this week, I was like, oh, I've learned a couple of things this week. Um, and I think that's what makes it interesting um, and engaging. And uh, the municipal politics, we, you know. One minute I'm sitting having a conversation about, um, you know, trying to find a pathway to build a hydrogen plant so that we can take our excess uh, clean energy and store it and deploy it. And then the next minute I'm on the phone talking with someone about, um, you know, someone's grass that's too long and how the rats are in their house, right? You get both ends of the spectrum and there's never a dull day. So I really <laughs> enjoy it. Good. And so if I look at you as like uh, first among equals uh, with you and your council colleagues, what's different about Summerside and maybe about PEI because of the work of this particular council by the time you're done? What's yeah, your I, collective vision. Yeah, the collective vision is really around the that first lens, that young working families lens in order to support uh, older adults. Um, our key priorities are housing, uh, downtown transformation, which is a gap that we have here in our city and goes again to the the young working families and older adults places and spaces for people to gather mm -hmm. uh, becoming a more welcoming inclusive and accessible community um, and investing in our core infrastructure and uh, work that we're doing on, on climate change you know, whether through uh, mitigation or adaption and uh, in terms of the council council is a really interesting group we have we've got some lively issues at council we um, have a couple of new counselors we have uh, a couple of counselors who have uh, 
that are wise and have spent many years in the chambers. And we have a number who are in their prime second term, know what they're doing and uh, still getting things done. So we've got a, an interesting group. And uh, you now first amongst equals, I really think of it as you're really trying to bring the group together, find out what people, what counselors want to do, and then trying to help enable them to do that within um, an overall vision that we've set. Hmm. What, if in your experience, then, what is it that would make a city council effective rather than one that just kind of grinds for four years? Um, one, I think it's really important that uh, councillors are enabled to take on what they want to take on, um, that w- that the dialogue and discussion can happen in a constructive way so people don't feel as though if they are disagreeing they're in some way outside of uh, the the group's opinion or some sort of inner circle's opinion i think it's really important to make sure that you create an opportunity for discussion and debate and, and alternative uh, alternate inputs um and you're not always working to 100 percent consensus either I, I i don't think that should always be the goal so in terms of what I think makes, I think this group is is has been pretty good. Uh, like we've got some really interesting people who have their own perspectives, um, and uh, they're a really valuable bunch. So it's it's more that's what I'll try and do in everything, which is like try and find people who can do stuff that we need to get done and, and let them go. Right. So another thing I often say that it's much. I'd much rather have people, and I think we've got uh, some of our council here who you have to pull back than those you want to push along. And uh, I think that's kind of the group we have going. Thanks. So I want to sort of start wrapping up here, and I have two questions yeah. to wrap up the interview here, Mayor. And the first one, I want to we talked about the challenges that municipalities are facing in with housing, with infrastructure. What are the things that are going right. What's going right in PEI when it comes to municipalities today? Because we don't want people to leave this episode and think, oh, everything's going wrong with the housing challenges and immigration and population dwindling. What's going mm. right? What's the thing that you go and you look at and you say, you know what, we do have our challenges, but we've got this going for us right now. Yeah, I, I think uh, most things are going right, even sometimes if they don't feel that way. And um, on all those fronts, uh, to a certain degree, at least the ones that we can control. Uh, I think in housing, I think we're on the right path. And I think we're um, collectively getting housing built here and increasing supply. And uh, that should uh, assist with uh, reducing some of the cost pressures that individuals are going to have, recognizing those things that are way outside of our control. Right? We just can't control inflation or global economics. We have to deal with what we got. Um yeah, I think we, as a community as well, I think there is a an energy here right now um, and sort of a, a vibrancy and a can-do attitude. So Summerside for so long has always had this ability to just get things done. Like around here, we just sort of get things done. Um, and I think that's growing and rubbing off on, on more people who have come to the community and people who have come here are bringing new perspectives and new energies as well. So I really think things are going in a in a positive direction, as difficult as it can be for so many who are out there, because uh, the world is, you know, sometimes it feels like the world's going totally crazy. Um, but I feel as though uh, we're on the right track. We're addressing the challenges that aren't just the ones that are going to be here at the next election cycle or in five years or in 10 years, but we're looking down the road um, as to what's going to improve the quality of life for uh, residents who are here when we're not. And that, to me, is always the goal. I think that's always the measure. That's what I'm, I do this for. That's why I signed up for this, um, was to try and improve the community and to do our best to make that happen. As, I don't know, maybe as generic as that sounds, that's it. That's that's the plan. It uh, takes a lot of work, and there's, uh, but I, I feel like that's where we're going. But like I said, the challenges that are out there um, are real for people. And whenever there is transition and there is change, uh, there is disruption and discomfort. And uh, and people are always going to be afraid of the unknown. And uh, when things are changing, there's a lot of unknowns. 
is it hard to be proactive than reactive? Because proactive, you want to look at the Summerside in 2035, 2050, 2075. Yeah. But the people who are here and now understand that they're here and now and they want to see advancements in their community today, not 20 years from now. Is it hard to sort of balance that proactive approach of making Summerside of your grandchildren's generation compared to the generation that's here right now? Yeah, I don't know if it's hard. I think it's necessary. I think you've got to do both. You've got to make sure you spend time in that quadrant, though, that is the future um, and addressing some of the challenges of tomorrow uh, today, as well as you have to be responding to what is happening actively on the ground and how people are actually feeling. So um, I think if you're too tied into either either side of that, then uh, and you could easily get wrapped up in either one of those. You could spend your whole time trying to prognosticate the future and create the, the you know the 2050 plan for the city of Summerside or wherever um, and forget about the you know the Tuesday necessities um, but at the same time you could spend all your time on the what matters this week and, and miss the big picture so it's balancing that I think it's making sure that the, the organization as well around you is helping to balance that I think one of the roles though as a mayor, uh, that's a little that's unique in a certain to a certain extent is I think you, as a mayor at least for me you have to lean more towards the big picture and the long term I think that is I think that's one of the things that is required I think you need to have the vision and try and initiate and push uh, push where we want to go in the years ahead um, because on the day-to-day -day, a lot of you know the organization the you know, municipal organization should be addressing those types of things um, but yeah, it's all about balance and there's no, you know, Chris, there's no, like, there's no playbook. You can't pick, there's a book called the mayor, but, um, there's no, there's no rules on any of this stuff. There's no right way or wrong way. There is just uh, the way that, uh, that you're taking them. What, um, I think that's what makes it interesting and what makes this all unique. So I have one last question and it, yeah. it's, it's, it's an important question for myself, <laughs> but, um, uh, we are on the cusp of summer. What is there fun to do in Summerside during the summer? Oh man, awesome! Well, a lot. So PEI goes. <laughs> the population of PEI it increases. Forget about the exponential growth from immigration. The summertime is where exponential growth really arrives here <laughs> with Central Island, and you can tell it in our communities, and you can tell it here in Summerside. Um, so we've got a ton of things on the go. One thing that I'm really proud of this year is. Uh, we sort of reimagined our Canada Day, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. I can't believe we're almost in July. Um, we have some incredible musicians, particularly a you know, number of incredible musicians, but some really incredible folk and country musicians, female singers from Summerside that we just sometimes don't play here. So uh, one of them is blowing up right now, uh, Allie Walker in the States. I think she just signed on with with Sony. Um, so we were, you know, we were really lucky. We got it. Ali to come to headline our uh, Canada Day festivities. And we've turned our Canada Day event, we still have our some of our regular programming, but we've turned it into a bit of a music festival um, centered around um, artists from here in Summerside. And we'll be, I think it'll be pretty awesome. So I'm pretty excited for that, uh, that to get started. Mayor, I want to thank you. And I want to thank you from both Ian and myself for joining us today in the political trenches and sitting down and talking about Summerside, but municipalities in the province of uh, Prince Edward Island. So thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Ian. I really appreciate uh, joining you today. Thanks.